Hi, it's Barry Neal here. In this video, I want to talk about something really controversial, and that is, what is hypnosis and how does it work? Um, <laughs> you'd think that the field of hypnotherapy would have some sort of agreement as to what hypnosis is, but that just isn't the case. And um, a lot of times people are still being taught the same old things that they've been taught for the last 50, 60, 70, even 100 years. Um, without really questioning what it is that they're doing. Uh, it's just because my teacher taught me this, therefore it must be true. And a lot of people are not really questioning what they've been taught. And you know what? There's a heck of a lot of research out there that tells us what hypnosis is, um, if we actually want to spend the time and actually look. Um, but more importantly, if you just open your eyes, open your ears and look at what is actually happening when you're doing hypnosis, or if you're watching a stage hypnosis show, or if you're watching people doing street hypnosis, or if you're watching people doing therapy, if you actually open your eyes and open your ears and you can see what's happening. And it's not what people have been told because there are complete counter examples to what is generally accepted. The generally accepted view of hypnosis that it's an ordered state of consciousness, that it has to do with a state of deep relaxation, or it's some form of trance. And therefore, to hypnotize someone, you have to put them into an altered state of consciousness or a deep level of relaxation and bypass the critical faculty of the conscious mind so that you can magically program the unconscious. Well, here's the thing. All the so-called things that are called deep trance phenomena, such as amnesia, anesthesia, positive and negative hallucinations, catalepsy, all those sorts of things, which are called deep trance phenomena, can happen in the normal waking state. So if that's the case, what's the point of that? What's the point of the, the trance? What's the point of the, the relaxation? Because all of those phenomena, which we call hypnosis, happen in the normal waking state. So when you actually stop and think about it, the altered state of consciousness, the deep relaxation, the trance, is not the hypnosis. It can't be, because if it were, then you wouldn't be able to get amnesia, anesthesia, um, positive, negative hallucinations and catalepsy unless you had those. It's like, hello, hello. So what is hypnosis then? Well, if you look at the non-state theory of hypnosis, what it basically says is that hypnosis is a suspension of disbelief and then what's called believed in imaginings. So the person starts to imagine and they start to get caught up into what they're imagining and they kind of forget that they're imagining and it causes changes in their body and the changes in the way they think. Now, this to me makes perfect sense because that's exactly how clients do their problems. That's exactly how a client does their problem. I'll give you an example. Some time ago, I had a guy come in who was getting married and the thought of giving a speech at his wedding terrified the life out of him. And he sat in my chair and I said, okay, when you think about getting married, what's running through your mind? He went, oh my God. He said, I just imagine myself at the top table. I've got my bride sitting next to me. Uh, and I'm absolutely shaking. I can hear the MC behind me and he's starting to talk about, he's ready to introduce me. And I'm sitting there fumbling through my notes, thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And he said, my heart's pounding, my stomach's churning. Uh, and then he calls my name and I have to stand up. And I imagine standing up and as I look out into the audience, there's people staring at me with these big bug eyes, judging everything I'm about to say. I'm absolutely terrified. Now, he's sitting in my office out in the country and the wedding's not till four months away. He's forgetting he's imagining, right? He's imagining the problem and he's forgetting that he's imagining. That is hypnosis. He's imagining and he's forgetting that he's imagining. And this is what really hypnosis is. It's about using the imagination. And this is really important because if we get to understand this, what we, what we can do is, is to understand that hypnosis has to be active. It's about the client actively using their imagination 
It's not passive. So this idea that we should be sending them through the floor and relax, 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 until they're almost comatose. And then they're like alleg allegedly sending their conscious mind off. So their conscious mind wanders off. Their conscious mind is thinking about Sainsbury's or Tesco's or what we're gonna have for dinner. And now somehow we're magically programming the mind. That, that, can't be, that can't be effective because they have to be actively imagining. And when you think about it, if, if, if those of you who've ever done the sort of classical tests or convincers, this is exactly what's happening there. We're getting them to actively use their imagination. So for example, if you do the lemon test with someone, you know, imagine a juicy white lemon in your hand, look down, see the really bright colors of it, feel the weight and the texture of the lemon in that hand. Now imagine taking a really sharp knife, cutting into that lemon. That's it. Feel the juice trickling down your fingers. That's it. Smell the citrusy aroma. Now imagine turning that half of that lemon out, looking at it and seeing the cut segments and the yellow rind and the white pithy bit. That's it. And now imagine bringing that up to your mouth and biting it and feel the citrusy taste on your taste buds, tingling it. Now, when people do that, if they imagine what you are telling them, then they will get a physiological change. It changes their physiology. You're giving them an experience. And that experience now enhances whatever belief they had about hypnosis. And it becomes self-reinforcing. So what we're doing when we're doing hypnosis is we're starting with whatever their current level of belief is about hypnosis. So we're meeting them where they are. So we took whatever current level of belief they have at that moment in time, we're going to meet them where they are with that level. Then what we're going to do is we get them to use their imagination. We're going to have them imagine something. And this is really key. Remember that hypnosis is believed in imagining. So we've got to get them to imagine something. So we might be imagining them to imagine that their eyelids are getting heavy, or we might be doing the book and balloon test. Now, if you do the book and balloon test, that's the perfect example. You're having them put their hands out, right hand, palm over, palm up, imagine a big heavy leather dictionary on that hand, six healing balloons on the other hand, closing their eyes, feel the weight pulling down on that arm, just really imagine that, getting heavier, heavier, heavier. Now imagine those six healing balloons getting lighter, 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 lifting, 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 lifting. Then you get them to open their eyes and they go, wow. And you can go, you know, you know, just after 20 seconds of using your imagination, you caused a physical change in your body. This is what hypnosis is. So again, we've started with whatever current level of belief they have. And then we're going to use something. We're going to have them imagine something. That imagination is going to change their physiology in some way. So in that, the case of the book and the balloon, the people will feel the heaviness in the arm with a lemon test. They, they can um, have an increase in the saliva in their mouth. They're getting a physiological change. That in and of itself is going to reinforce the belief. So what we're doing is going around like that. So that reinforces the belief. Then we go, like in the same way as you can feel the heaviness in, in your arm and the lightness in that one, you can now, whatever it is, whatever we want to go next, you know, in the same way as that hand can go um, feel really heavy, now imagine putting it down on the table and imagine that hand being glued down, stuck to the table. Imagine it getting stuck down, glued down, stuck down to the table. We're just giving them something else to imagine, which is giving another change in their physiology, which is giving them a belief. And this is why it's so important. Hypnosis is active. We want to actively get them to use their imagination. And so with some of the NLP techniques, let's say you're working with someone who's got a bad memory, a, a, a terrible memory of something in their past. And when they bring it up, they imagine it here, right? We're then gonna have them imagine it in a different way. So we're gonna imagine, if it's color, making it black and white. We're then gonna have them imagine pushing it off in the distance, growing it small and dark. And each way, as they use their imagination, they're gonna feel different. So if you have someone who's got a traumatic memory, for example, and it's big and bright and colorful right in front of them, and if you say to them, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine turning off the color so that image becomes black and white. 
Yeah, can you do that? Yeah, just imagine doing that. Imagine it becoming black and white. Can you do that? Yeah, great. As you do that, notice how that changes how you feel. Yes, it does. Increasing the belief. Then we're gonna go, okay, now push it off into the distance. See it way over there, about 100 meters away. As you see it way over there, notice how that changes how you feel. So they're imagining over there, 100 meters away. Now, when they get into their felt sense, it feels different. Reinforcing the belief. Okay, now shrink it down into a tiny little dot, small and dark, way over there, using their imagination. As you see it way over there, small and dark, like a tiny little dot, notice how that changes how you feel. Changes their physiology, reinforces the belief again. And this is what we're doing. So hypnosis is active. It is not passive. We're not bypassing some mythical part of the, um, the mind, the critical faculty of the mind or anything like that. What we're doing is actively getting them to use their imagination. And so hypnosis really is not this altered state of consciousness. It's about them using their imagination and forgetting that they're imagining. Now, one of the interesting things you can do is if you're working with someone and let's say they've, they're anxious and they've got these anxious thoughts. Well, what's happening there is they're forgetting that they're thinking. That's really the problem. <laughs> they're forgetting that they're thinking. Now, guess what happens if you get them, if you remind them that they're thinking? They start to feel better. So, for example, you can use the classical tests as a therapeutic technique. So, for example, do the heavy arms with them, right? And the light, heavy light arm. Do that, have them imagine a big block, balloons on that hand, have them feel that, right? Do that, say, okay, now open your eyes, notice where your hands are, right? Okay, great. So here's the thing. There's no book. There's no balloons. And yet your body responded as if they were actually there, right? They actually responded as if they were actually there. What happened there? I asked you to imagine something and you got caught up in it and you kind of forgot that you were imagining it. And because you forgot that you're imagining it, the body can't tell the difference between a real or imagined experience. So it created that. Well, here's the thing. Guess what happens if you stop and tell yourself, hang on a minute, this isn't happening right now. There is no book. There is no balloon. This is just my, this is just my thinking. And they go, well, I don't know. Well, let's do it again. Okay, so here's what you do. Close your eyes, put your hands out like this. And I want you to see exactly the same thing. Imagine a book on that hand. Imagine the balloons on that hand. But this time, remind yourself you're just thinking, that you're just imagining it. There is no book, there is no balloons, but you can see them there. See the book, see the balloons, but know that you're thinking. Okay, keep doing that. What's gonna happen is they're not gonna move. <laughs> and suddenly they go, huh. So you go, and you go to them, so are you telling me that if you think something, you can think the same thought, but one time it has an effect on the body and the other time it doesn't. And the only difference was you told yourself you were thinking. Well, let's go back to that anxious thought for a moment. Now think that anxious thought, and just while you're sitting here, remind yourself that it's not happening right now, and you're just thinking. What happens? And suddenly, the anxiety levels go. Because we're, you, we're getting their current level breathing, having them imagine something, it's causing a change in their physiology, and it's reinforcing the belief. So we can, we can stack the deck all the way through. So the hypnosis really is about meeting them where their current belief is. So if they come in and they go, uh, yeah, I believe in hypnosis, great, we're off to a great start. Or like, I've been to see a, state, a hypnotist before and they really helped me, brilliant. But what if they say, well, I'm not really sure it'll work with me? And you go, well, okay, well, before we come to the hypnosis, let me just, um, let's just try something to see how good you are at using your imagination. Uh, and this is really just how your mind works. So we, we're not going to do the hypnosis bit at this point. Let me just show you how your mind works. Now, when you were a kid, did you used to play imaginary games? Were you like good at using your imagination? 
Oh yeah, 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 great. Well, it's the same sort of thing. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to imagine something. And some people find this really easy to do. And some people need a little bit more practice. So let's see where you are right at this point. So at that point, we've, we're getting in with a belief. We're not going to jump in and go, yes, you can be hypnotized. I'm the miraculous hypno man. No, we're just going to meet them at their belief. Then we get them to imagine something like the heavy book, the balloons, or the eyes getting test, or the lemon test, whatever. And we notice what happens. Now, if they go, you do the lemon test and they go, well, yeah, no, nothing really happened there. I say, OK, did you really imagine that? Or were you just thinking? Because what I want you to do is I want you to imagine it as if you were actually there. You know, like when you when you use your imagination and like um, it's a real full body feeling. You know, you like when you're dreaming, you like if like you are like you're being chased by some mad axeman. It's not just oh, what a family of thought. You feel like you're being chased. Yeah. So I want you to use imagination that way. Oh, okay. And you run it again, and then so again you're going in their belief, having them use their imagination again. And then you're getting this change in their physiology. The moment you've got that, you're reinforcing the belief. Yeah. And then we can go. So it's about this. Years ago, um, there used to be something that magicians used to use called hypnoheat. And I don't know if you can still get this anymore, but uh, I think it was banned because the chemical it was kind of dangerous. But in the days where everyone used to smoke, what they used to do with this thing called hypnoheat, and I think the chemical was mercuric chloride, I think, if I thought my head. And it was um, something that old time stage hypnotists used to use to absolutely convince clients that they could be hypnotized because it gave them a massive experience <laughs> that something was happening. And what happened with, with this hypnoheat, what it was, most people at the time used to smoke. So if you ask someone who's got a pack of cigarettes on, on you, most people would have one. And what you do is you take the silver foil. For those of you who are old enough to remember, the pack of cigarettes over the top of the cigarettes, when you open the top up, there was a bit of silver foil. And what you would do is you'd peel the silver foil away from the paper backing. And what you, they would do is in their pocket, they'd have a sponge, a damp sponge, which had this chemical on mercuric chloride. And they quickly just dip their finger in their pocket surreptitiously so no one would notice. So they got some of this chemical on their fingers. And then they would rub it on the silver foil and squash the silver foil up and say, give me your hand. And say, I want you to, and they place it on their hand like that. And I say, I want you to focus on that, that silver foil now. And I want you to use your imagination. That, that, that silver foil is getting hotter, hotter and hotter. And what would happen is a chemical reaction between the mercuric chloride and the foil would take place and it would crease the heat and it would get bloody hot. I mean, it was really seriously hot. There's no way the person's going to fight it because it really gets hot. So you go, imagine it getting hotter and hotter. It's getting so hot that you can barely hold it in your hand. Hotter and hotter. The moment you feel it burning in your hand, just let it go. And what would happen? They go, they go ow, ow, ow. Now, what's happened there? You met them at their current level of belief. Oh, I don't think I can be hypnotized. But you've given them something, in this case, you they conned them. But what it did was it spiked their imagination, which caused a change in their physiology, which reinforced the belief. And at that point, the stage hypnotist could do an induction or whatever, and the person would massively go into hypnosis really quickly because they've had this convincer. So hypnosis isn't about an altered state of consciousness. It's not about relaxation. It's about meeting them at their current level of belief, getting them to use their imagination and creating a change in the physiology which reinforces the belief. So this is what's happening. Hypnosis is believed in imaginings. So when you get your head around this, it makes it so much easier when you understand this is what it is because you can then you don't need to do the, the big lengthy inductions. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing that for some people. You get some people who are anxious, they might need to learn to relax. Fine, do a PNLR induction as part of the process, but don't confuse that with the hypnosis bit in your mind. And this then takes the pressure off because it's not about what you're doing, it's are they using their imagination? And if they are, it's really easy. So a lot of it is about us educating the client and getting them to use your imagination. So this is how hypnosis really works. It's not down to an order state of consciousness. 
It's not a relaxation. I say the deep relaxation. It's not chance. It's just them using their imagination, but forgetting they're imagining it. And when you understand that, it really takes the pressure off because it's them. <laughs> it's them. It's them using their imagination. So have a think about this. You may need to watch this a couple of times to really take it on board, but it really is important because it makes, it frees you up so incredibly. And then the rich, if you're gonna do an induction, recognize the induction is just a ritual. It's a ritual that the client thinks they need. And often the hypnotherapist thinks they need, but if that's what it is, it's the, the induction doesn't induce this state of hypnosis. The induction is just a ritual. That's what it is. So have a think about this. I know for some people it's gonna really challenge your thinking, but really start to notice, hang on a minute, those stage hypnotists, they got people running around stage, quacking like ducks. Where's the relaxation? The street hypnotists are doing street hypnosis in noisy streets. What, what, you know, what happened to the, oh, you may need to have a quiet, relaxed environment to do hypnosis so they can really relax. No, it's not, you don't. It's just a suspension of disbelief using their imagination and for them to forget that they're imagining it. That's how they create the problems and that's how we can create the solutions.